Thank you guys. So today I want to talk to you about two things that are currently at risk in our country. One is LGBTQ youth, and the Ameri other one is the American small town. Now, normally you would think LGBTQ community and rural America, typically they're at odds politically. They would rarely align as allies. But I believe that by working together and engaging and embracing one another, they can actually help save each other and not only make each other survive, but thrive. LGBTQ youth are four times more likely to commit suicide than their peers. Social stigma. Often they're being bullied. Rejection of being kicked out of their house from their parents, from their families, from their entire support systems. <coughs> These are just some of the reasons that cause this horrific statistic. Likewise, the American small town has seen a 59% population decrease as Americans are moving to larger cities. Eight in 10 Americans <coughs> now live in metropolitan areas. And the people that are staying in small towns, they're aging. Millennials are moving away, seeking jobs, diverse environments, creative economies. And in the wake, guess what they're leaving behind? Depressed economies, high unemployment, a bleak outlook is that in some small towns can even lead to an opioid crisis. According to the Wall Street Journal, small town America is so ravaged by drugs, unemployment, and hopelessness that the journal has actually called rural America the new inner city. And guess who, by the way, has a long and proven track record of revitalizing, revamping, run down and often forgotten inner city neighborhoods? Yep, the LGBTQ community. Gatorfication, as it is often called, <laughs> has been raising property values, bringing in businesses, creating jobs, and spiking economic development in inner city neighborhoods for decades. Not only has it made property values rise, but diversity is good for economic growth. Gaberhoods, as they are often called, has helped revise parts of New York, Chicago, Boston, Washington, D.C. And let's not forget about the tourist towns, Asbury Park, right down the road from here. Or what about Miami, Fort Lauderdale, Key West? So much so that a leading economic developer in Florida said that gays and lesbians are actually the canaries to the creative economy. And in 2017, according to the real estate website Trulia, people paid 37% more to live in neighborhoods that had a higher share of LGBTQ residents. So again, this has been proven that this is working. And not only that, some hot tech hotspots and hubs also follow gay, gay neighborhoods. And let's not forget, it's a sure sign that gentrification overall is not far behind. So if it's working in some of the most run-down neighborhoods and inner cities, why couldn't it work in some of America's small towns? Now, I know what I'm saying may sound like a utopian dream, <laughs> and it could never work. Especially since I've grown up in a small, Christian, conservative, rural town in Kansas. I graduated with 16 kids in my high school class, the same eight girls and eight boys since kindergarten. There was zero diversity. So much so that my white Protestant family sometimes felt like outsiders because our lineage didn't go back to 300 years like everybody else in the town. <laughs> and then I started to figure out my sexuality. And then I realized not only was I an outsider, but if other people in that town knew, I would also become an outcast. Of course, that was the 1980s. Times have changed. America's evolved. LGBTQ rights have come a long way. But I still know in certain small towns, there's the fear of the other and the fear of being different 
And that is the main reason why they're becoming extinct. For me, growing up LGBT in a place where the F word was prevalent, where smear the queer, maybe it was just a game, but I knew the underlying context, where whispers were heard loudly if a female was too masculine or a male was too feminine, and God forbid if you were over the age of 30 and not married, because then the rumor would have really started. <laughs> now I held tight to my secret, knowing and fearing that everybody I knew and loved and my entire world would end up hating me. So much so, that I began hating myself. And that internalized homophobia and often isolationism was debilitating. But I also knew that it takes a village to raise a child. And I didn't want to let down that village to raise me. And it, sometimes it causes excruciating pain. So if you're in one of those towns, what can you do? What can you do to be more tolerating, accepting, and also not just in tolerating, accepting, engaging, and activating for different populations that are diverse and different than yours? I think one place to start is where the division often begins. Faith-based organizations. If you have affirming churches that welcome everyone to worship and believe that we are all God's children and should be, create, should be treated as such, then you're creating an environment of inclusivity and diversity in any community. And often, churches are the backbones of small towns. If you can get them on board, you're sending a welcome message that you're willing to take a culture shift and be more inclusive and invite that diversity in. Another study came out that actually polled people that lived in rural areas that identified as LGBTQ. One of the things they cited as a top concern was safety. So if you're not focused on being serious about safety, and that includes legal protection, then you're not serious about diversity. Currently in the US, you can still be fired in 28 states for being LGBTQ. And many of those states don't offer housing protection either. But if you are a small town in one of those states, there's something you can do about it. You can pass city ordinances to protect your citizens. Take Bay St. Louis, Mississippi, for example. Mississippi has some of the harshest anti-LGBTQ laws in the country. They just passed a religious freedom law that basically makes it legal to discriminate for religious reasons. But Bay St. Louis, a town of around 10,000 people, made up of fishermen, shrimpers, farmers, and every kind of occupation in between, and of every race and every religion, got together and passed a city ordinance and said, not in my town. They made sure that it was illegal to discriminate based on sexual orientation. They didn't just pay lip service to say, bring on diversity, we want a diverse place. They actually passed a law to make sure it happened. Along those same lines, you need to look at your small businesses in your town. Do they have fair hiring practices? Are they not only just LGBTQ friendly, but are they friendly towards all minorities? You have to make sure that your employment laws don't discriminate. And if a small town, a small business wants to come into your town, or a small business wants to be created, the same standards and merits need to apply. Again, demonstrating that you understand the value of bringing in outsiders that can help revitalize your small town. Schools, also a very key component of making sure that you have an inclusive environment. Schools need to be a safe place where people are learning the reasons behind wanting a diverse population, the reasons behind believing in equality for all. A good place to start is a gay, lesbian, education, straight network. It teaches the value of everyone working together. It also teaches the future generations of people in your town not just to appreciate diversity, but to celebrate it 
Because ultimately, it could be something that saves your town. <clears throat> I would also look at local politics, your school boards, your city councils, your law enforcement, the ones that are making the laws, and also the ones that are enforcing the laws. They have to have diverse representation. Again, being LGBTQ friendly. And for our purposes of our talk today, we're specifically talking about LGBTQ, but we mean open to all, and that means every minority, because that's what's gonna save a town. I believe that it could also stop the brain drain. And what the brain drain is, is that you're losing some of your best, youngest, and brightest talented people because they want to be in diverse environments. They want diverse economies. They want to have a creative economy, class, and culture. For me, I loved growing up in that small town. I loved my small town values. Being a good neighbor. <laughs> Having hometown pride. Understanding the value of hard work. But I believe those values can coexist in a diverse population, in a community that celebrates those differences and doesn't fear them. <clears throat> if small towns do not make that culture shift, they will not be able to retain their young professionals. They will not be able to mix up their economy. They will not be able to offer diversity that many people crave. And they will stay at an increased risk of dying. And if the LGBTQ community in rural America is not embraced, supported, and welcomed, they too will also stay at an increased risk of dying. I believe these unlikely allies can come together to save each other. And I also think that tiny shift in viewing a human a little bit differently and maybe different than your town has for years and generations and your forefathers before, can not only save a town, but it can save lives. Thank you.